In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this really awesome cylinder text effect right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have a brand new composition created, we first just want to begin by creating some new text. So we can go up to the text tool or we can go ahead and hold Command and T. That is the keyboard shortcut for that. And then we can just select anywhere in this video and type out your word. So I'm going to go for, let's go for Brook of Films. And I'm just going to increase the size of this in the character window. Of course, if you can't see the character window, then just make sure you've got window character turned on. There you go, like so. And then it's really important that we have this looping a few times. So we're going to pull this over to the left. So pull this over to the very left. We'll just select all of that, copy that, and then we'll just paste that in a few times. And then from there, we can just pull the scale of this down a little bit so that it fits in the composition. Now from here, we can go ahead and we can add other layers of text below. So I'm just going to copy this text. We'll go Command C, Command V, and I'll just change this bottom one to subscribe. There you go, like so. And I'm going to change the scale of this font down a little bit. So I'll pull the font size down to 50. Go Command C. And then we'll just paste a few times. Do that one more time and then we'll pull the scale down just a little bit so that it fits in. There you go. So now we'll just put this closer together. And now from here, we just need to put this into its own pre-comp. So we're just going to select both of those layers. We'll right click and select pre-compose. And of course you can name this if you like, but I'm not going to bother. So we'll just press OK. Now from here, we'll go into effects and presets. And again, if you can't see the effects and presets window, just go into window and turn on effects and presets like so. Now from here, we're going to search for cylinder. So that is CC cylinder and that is in the perspective folder. We'll drop that on our pre-comp and instantly you'll see we've got this cylinder effect now applied. But there's a few things that we need to do to this in order to make this perfect. So first of all, we'll go into radius. That's at the top. And if you increase this, this is going to make this wide. If you pull this down, it's going to make it really narrow. But I like this at 100%. Then we'll go into position and we've got the X, Y and Z positions here. So if we increase the X position, it moves over to the right. If we increase the Y position, it goes down. And if we increase the Z position, then it's either going to come closer to the camera or further away from the camera. I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. Then we'll go into rotation and you can see we've got X, Y and Z. So I'm just going to increase the X rotation so that it tilts down a little bit so we can see what's happening behind here. Then we'll go into Y rotation and this is where we're getting this animation from. So you can either go ahead and create some keyframe animation or alternatively, we can add an expression to this. And the expression is a much cleaner way of doing this, I feel. So we're just going to hold option on the keyboard. We'll select that stopwatch icon there on rotation Y, and that will load up this expression window down here. Then from there, we're just going to do time, T-I-M-E, star, and then we'll do a number, so 100. And then we'll just click out of this. Don't press the enter button because doing so will just put you on the next line below. So click anywhere outside of that expression box. And then as you'll see, when we play this back, we've got this effect now applied. The problem is though, that's just a little bit too quick. It kind of looks like we're on a roller coaster ride. So we're going to go back into that. So just click on that expression. We'll pull this down to 10. And that looks a lot better. Although you might argue that this is a touch too slow now. So we'll just go in and change this to 20. Time star 20. And there you go. We've got this really cool effect now happening. And then, of course, we've got the Z rotation as well. And that's just going to rotate the text on this axis, which you can animate over time, but I'm not going to bother with that for now. Moving on, we've got light and shading. So we'll go into light and you can see we've got light intensity. So because this is a 3D text, you can affect the lighting of this text. So we can increase the light intensity to add more light on this side and this side. Like color, you can change the color of the light if you wanted. So as you can see, we're catching some red light on here, but I'm not going to bother with that for now. Then we've got light height. And if you pull this up, it's going to spill onto more of the text and therefore more of it will be illuminated. Or if you keep this quite low, it's only going to catch a specific part of the text. So I'm going to keep it around 
30, 40%, somewhere around there. And then of course you've got the light direction so you can change where the light is being angled from. So I think that looks great there. Moving down, we've got shading and we've got our ambient, diffuse, specular, roughness and metal. So if we increase the ambient, it's just going to spill off a bit more. So this is just the ambient light within the scene. So I'm just going to keep this at around 40. Diffusion is just going to soften that, but I like to keep this nice and harsh. So keep that somewhere around here. Specular isn't really doing anything, so don't worry about that for now. Roughness, again, won't really affect the look of this too much. And then metal, same thing as well. Now, there you go. The cylinder effect is basically now complete. So if that's all you needed, feel free to click off the video. But I'm going to show you how to animate the text within the pre-comp so that you've got the text animating and then you've got this within the cylinder effect. So in order to do that, we first want to go into our pre-comp. So we're going to go back to our text layers here and we're going to target the subscribe. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to animate the subscribe button to go up and down just a bit. Now, there's many ways of doing this, but the way I just prefer to do it is to just delete everything here. So we'll delete all of the subscribes except for the first one. And then we'll animate this first one. So we'll press P on the keyboard to load position, create a brand new keyframe on position where it is. Then we'll move roughly half a second over to the right and we'll pull the position down. And then we'll go over another half second, copy those two keyframes, and then we'll paste them in there. So it's just going to do this movement over time. So we can copy all of those keyframes again. We'll move over to the two second mark, paste that in. Copy all of the keyframes, move over to the four second mark, paste that in. And we're just going to keep repeating this process until we've got this permanent loop. So it's just going to do this over time. Now from here, I'm just going to select all of those keyframes. So select all of those. We'll click on one of those keyframes select keyframe assistant and select easy ease, which is just going to soften out that animation like so. Now we're just going to copy this subscribe text there. So we'll go command C, command V. Now from here, I'm just going to shift this back half a second. So I'm going to go to that second keyframe here and then we'll move that over to the beginning. So like so. So as you can see, our text is now doing this which does look fine, but that's not the effect that we're looking for here. So I'm just going to press P on the keyboard to load position. Then I'm just going to select all of those keyframes. Make sure we're hovering over one of those keyframes. If you're not, it's going to add another keyframe, but if you're hovering over one, then it means you can affect them all, making sure they're all selected though. Then we just move the position over to the right, so around here. And when we play this back, you can see it's moved over to the right and we've now got this position animating over time. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to pre-comp those two layers. So we'll select both, right click, pre-compose. We can rename this subscribe and then we'll just make a copy of that. Command C, Command V, move the position over. Command C, Command V, press P, move the position over. I'll go to all of these layers, press P on the keyboard and just move that into the middle roughly. So something like this. So if we play this in this pre-comp, this is how this looks. It's very basic, but when it's in the cylinder effect, that will look really awesome. So we'll go back to the cylinder effect. And there you go. You can see we've got the subscribe animating individually on that cylinder effect, which I think looks really cool. Now, the great thing is because this cylinder text effect is in its own pre-comp, it's effectively being treated as its individual layer, just one layer which means we can drop effects onto this cylinder layer and it's going to affect everything at the same time. So if I just make two copies of that text, we'll go into tint, so T-I-N-T, drop tint on all of those layers, like so. Then we'll go to that top layer, change the map white to, to red. We'll go to the second layer, we'll change map white to, to a blue. We'll go to that third layer, and we'll map the white to green. Then we'll go to these top two layers. We'll go to toggle switches slash modes and we'll change the mode from normal to screen. And as you can see, we're back to stage one. Everything is back white again. But if we move the position of that first layer over a touch, 
we're getting this really cool effect now happening on our text. And of course, if you wanted, you can make another copy of that text, put it on the top, delete the tint effect. There you go, like so. And then we can select the bottom layers with this effect applied. We'll pre-comp that, press T on the keyboard to load opacity and pull the opacity down of this. You could also add a glow effect onto this as well if you wanted to really take this to the next level. So we'll decrease the threshold, increase the radius of this, increase the glow intensity. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this text animating on the bottom. We've got the cylinder effect on the text. And then, of course, we've got this color effect on the text itself. And I think that looks really awesome. So there you go. That is how you make this 3D cylinder text effect right inside of Adobe After Effects, animate the text individually within the text, and then add some color effects onto this to take that to the next level. Thank you for watching this video. I really do hope you found it useful, and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.